guys, Kira here for Smashing Sundays. Um, I'm back. I was off on the holidays, so I didn't make these videos for a couple of weeks. But I'm back. Um, and today's topic is loneliness. Um, if you've been following all week, we've been um, talking about a different emotion a day. And the final in those is loneliness. Um, and I'm going to break this up into two parts. I don't know if it's going to go long or what, but I thought I'd start with um, talking about the experience of loneliness and its role within an eating disorder. And then um, in the second part, look at ways that I um, manage and overcome that um, emotion. Um, so yeah. Okay, so my experience with loneliness. Um, personally, I believe that a big part of my um, eating disorder has stemmed from feelings of loneliness. Um, I would turn to food when I um, felt alone. Um, I, I started as a binge eater. Um, I started, for well, lack of a better wording there. Um, if I felt alone, I'd seek comfort in the pantry. Literally, I'd lock myself in our pantry. It was a room. Um, and just gorge. Um, and I guess for me, that feeling of loneliness came from, um, firstly, yeah, I've had a few moves in my life, um, I'm what, 23, nearly 24, and I've moved at least 13 times, um, the first major move was when I was 8, um, I came home and moving truck had just left and the rest of our belongings were packed up into the van and we were going to Sydney that night. Um, I, I had some idea that it was happening, it wasn't completely, you know, our oh, belongings in. Um, but I wasn't really told what they were moving and was given you know, a couple of minutes to say goodbye to a friend. Um, and then, you know, 14 hours later, I'm in a new state, knowing nobody. Um, all my family were in the state. Um, <laughs> and I was just this lonely little girl in this brand new state. Um, and our home life wasn't ideal, but at least when I lived close to family, I'd get respite from staying with aunts and uncles, and I'd lost that, so I just felt so displaced and, you know, didn't really know where I was. Um, and that feeling would become somewhat overwhelming. Um, and again, I'd turn to food. Um, but then, as my eating disorder progressed, um, I almost replaced the need for social contact with my eating disorder. Um, 
you know, as long as I had my binging and purging for my crazy meal plan, I wasn't alone, you know, I had them. Um, which is really unhealthy. Um, and then I became involved in a few, um, I wouldn't say pro eating disorder communities, but certainly ones that weren't recovery orientated. It was very much about wallowing in the loneliness in a um, group environment. And I did make some good friends. Um, sure, some of those friendships were quite unhealthy, but, you know, I had some form of, you know, social contact. And I guess that's something that I am still dealing with now that I am in recovery. Um, I mean, I have some wonderful recovery buddies. Um, it does get hard when, you know, our journeys um, aren't matched. Like, with some friends, they're further than me, and in other cases, I'm further than them. So we're not always on the same path. So, you know, there is that feeling of being alone, um, <laughs> despite being together. Um, but the difference is, I don't turn to food anymore. Um, and I think that's important, you know, to recognise.